Virtually every video effect in Premiere Pro has properties. And virtually every property is key frameable. That is, you can have that property's value change over time. You can animate effects. And that is a great feature inside Premiere Pro. You're going to want to animate effects time and again. So to follow along with this lesson, go to Working Files, open up Projects, and open up 0905 using keyframes. This is a one-clip project. Let me just hit the backslash key here just to make sure you can see the whole length of this clip. It's just some flowers here. And we're going to apply some effects to this flower. First of all, let's just take a look at some properties. I'm going to click on the clip to make it active, to select it and also open it up inside the Effect Controls panel. We've talked about these fixed effects before. Let me open up Motion. Now these are properties. These guys here with those little stopwatches in front of them are properties. They're pretty logical. Position, sure, that means that you can you know, move it around and scale. You, know, you can make it bigger or smaller, what have you like so. And then rotation, you know, clearly we can rotate it around. Anchor point may not be so obvious, but the anchor point is the thing about which it rotates and about which it scales, and you can position that elsewhere. It looks like we're moving the clip here, but in fact, we're moving the anchor point relative to the clip. But this last thing, anti-flicker filter, what the heck is that? Well, you're going to find lots of properties that you're going to go, what the heck is that? So what I want to tell you is that it's okay to not know what these properties mean. There are dozens of effects and hundreds of properties, and some of them will be obscure. And so to track down what they mean, go ahead and go to the Help system. To do that, just go to Help and then click on Adobe Premiere Pro Help or press the F1 key. The F1 key is kind of common for almost all pieces of software. It takes you to whatever help system they've got with that software. So press F1. And that takes you online to this Adobe Premiere Pro Help. It's a new system for CS6. It has a lot more community content in it. It's not organized the way the old reference system was with sort of an index or table of contents down the left-hand side here. Nevertheless, this is how it works now. So I want to check out whatever anti-flicker filter is. So I'm going to go over here to Effects and Transitions. That sounds good. Over here in Effects and Transitions, I see we've got an Effects and Transitions reference. Okay, I'm going to go there. And when I get there, I'm going to discover that the Effects and Transitions reference does not have the fixed effects. They're not part of this. Now, this is a dynamic help system, and it's quite possible that by the time you look at this, they might be included here. And they also might talk about the anti-flicker filter here, but they aren't doing that now. So all is not lost. Just go to search and type in anti-flicker right there and click enter or return. Let's see what happens. There we go. We got this eliminate flicker and it says the lines and blah, blah, blah. The anti-flicker filter right there. I'm going to click on this to see what happens. It takes us to this little page here. Thin lines and sharp edges sometimes cause flicker when shown in interlaced displays. Those are older TV sets. And so the anti-flicker filter fixes that by making things just a little bit blurry. Basically, I'm showing you this because I know you're going to run into some properties where you just can't figure out what they're talking about, and you need to track them down. And the way you track them down is via help. I'm going to close this now and go back. All right, our goal here is to animate properties. Let me get this guy reset by clicking on this little reset button there. Now we're all back to normal. I'm going to close down motion because we're going to deal with motion several times in a couple of upcoming chapters and several lessons. I want to find something else. And a good place to start is blur. So I'm going to go to effects in the effects panel. I want to find a blur effect. Now I can type in blur to search for blur, but there's actually a blur section here, a blur category. So I'm going to open up video effects and go to blur and sharpen. And the de facto blur effect is Gaussian blur. So I'm going to drag that over to our flowers clip. And now we've added it. So here we are, we've got blurriness. That's the main property here is blurriness. And it's pretty obvious that when you set it at the zero, it's not blurry at all. If I change the property by using my scrubby tool to drag across, it gets blurry. Notice the edges get kind of hard there. I can fix that by clicking this repeat edge pixel. So I'll click that just to make sure it's blurry all the way across the screen. Well, now what I want to do is I want to have that change over time. I want that property to change over time. And I'm going to do that using keyframes. So what are keyframes? Keyframes are little markers that say, at this point in time, the value of this property is this much. And then the next keyframe says, okay, now that value is this much. And so keyframes mark the beginning and the end of a change in values. So I'm going to put a keyframe here at the beginning, right where the current time indicator is located, right at the start of this clip. I'm going to put a keyframe there that has the value of 134. And to do that, I need to turn on keyframes. I need to toggle animation on. And the toggle animation on off switch is this little stopwatch. I click that, and that turns on keyframes. And when you do that, it puts a keyframe wherever the current time indicator is currently located. And the keyframe is a little diamond. 
Since you're seeing only half the diamond, that means it's right at the beginning of the clip. There is a keyframe, and that keyframe is worth 134, whatever that is. 134 blurriness values. Now I'm going to take my current time indicator and move into the clip a little ways, and nothing's going to change. That's the way it should be, because we set the Gaussian blur to 134, and we have not told it to change over time. But I want it to get sharp. I want the image to become sharp. So all I need to do now is change blurriness from 134 to 0. So I'm going to drag it to 0, and now it's sharp. When I put the current time indicator to a new position, change the value, and have keyframes turned on, that automatically adds a new keyframe. And there's that new keyframe right there. Notice that it's kind of cut in two. The left-hand side indicates that it's coming from a keyframe. The right-hand side says there's nothing after it. There's no keyframe after this. So what I've done is I've said at this point in time, basically two seconds into the clip, this should be the value of blurriness. And what's going to happen now is that Premiere Pro will interpolate from here to here. It'll gradually change from this value to that value. I'm going to put the current time indicator back to the beginning, and we'll watch that change happen over time. There you go. It goes from blurry to sharp. I can make that change take longer. I can take this keyframe and move it to the right. That doesn't change the value of the keyframe. That just changes the point at which it arrives at that value. So I'm going to go over here to the left again, and it's going to take longer to get sharp. And finally, it's sharp. Or I can make it go faster. I can drag it closer to the previous keyframe. And the values won't change. The value of the first one is still 134, and the value of the second one is still 0. It's just going to happen much faster. That's how that works. Now, if I want to add another keyframe and make it blurry again, for example, I can pull this guy farther into the clip and make it blurry again. So what's going to happen now? This keyframe turns into a solid color because it went from this to this, and now from this to that. So the keyframe has things going in and out of it both ways. It's yellow because it's currently selected. I'll click away to not select it anymore. And I'll go from and to and to and from. Let's go from here to that, from here to that. Here we go. Gets sharp, gets blurry. There you go. It took its time getting blurry. I can make it go faster like this. Go back to the beginning. Sharp, blurry, and now it's going to stay blurry for the rest of the clip. I can move those guys around, make it go longer. I can make this very blurry at the end. Make this sharp at the middle, like so. So it'll get blurry, blurry. It'll stay blurry for a long time. Get sharp for just a moment, and then start going back to being blurry again. Now, most folks might want it to get unblurry. Might want it to get sharp quickly, stay sharp all the way across, and then get blurry quickly at the end. How do we do that? Well, you can take this keyframe and click on it, make it yellow as it is now, select it, and then copy it. If you go Edit, Copy, you're going to copy whatever is currently active. And what's active right now is that keyframe. I'm going to go over here to where the current time indicator is now located. I'm going to go Edit, Paste, or Control-V. Next, it's going to put the exact same keyframe there. I'm going to pull this thing away, and we'll watch how that changes. It's going to go from blurry to sharp, and it's going to stay sharp because this value equals that value. And then it's going to dip back down to being blurry again. So you can add keyframes by putting your current time indicator someplace and just changing the value, and that'll put a keyframe there. You can also delete keyframes. Let's say this last one, I don't want it to get blurry. I click on that one. Now that it's active, I press the delete or backspace key, and it's gone. So this guy just gets sharp and stays sharp, which means I don't need this one anymore. I can click on that one, make it go away. And by the way, you're going to watch this guy have two sides to it now. I'm going to click this guy, delete it. There you go. And now we just have this one set of keyframes from blurry to sharp. Now I know this keyframe thing can be confusing, and just my explaining it one time really isn't sufficient. So I'm going to do it a couple more times, and then we're going to revisit keyframes several times in the next few chapters as we work on more effects. So let's just move on down the line here and add another effect to this clip. I'm going to delete Gaussian Blur. I want to go down to Change to Color. Now I don't remember where Change to Color is, so I'm going to Change. And there's two of them. There's Change Color and Change to Color. They're both similar, but we're going to go with Change to Color and click on that and drag it to the flowers here. And you can change a color from something to something. So I'm going to pick these purple flowers here. I'm going to go with the eyedropper and say, let's pick these guys. And they immediately turn orange because the change to color is to hue, and hue allows them to turn orange. We're going to deal with this in a second. I want to change the colors to something else. So I'm going to click on this little swatch here to say, let's change this to something else from purple to, let's say, red. I'll click down here to red. Once I've selected it here in the box, I go OK. We'll change them to red. Now, you don't see much difference there. That's because it's a hue, so the hue is not quite so dramatic. If I went down here to something else like hue, lightness, and saturation, it would get really kind of garish. So we'll stick with hue here. And now I want this to change over time. I want this color that I changed it to to change over time. So I'm going to put my current time indicator at the beginning here. 
I'm going to click on the toggle animation switch to turn on keyframes. That means that the value of this keyframe is that red color at this point in time. I want to go in here a little ways. I want to change the value to something else. I don't need to do something. I don't need to say add a keyframe here. I just want to go over and change the value. So I'm going to go from red to, let's say, green. Pick that green color there. Click OK. And since I've changed the value, that automatically adds a keyframe. I'm going to go down here toward the end. I want to change the value again. Now, I can go change the color again, and that'll automatically add a keyframe. Or I can click this little diamond here between these two triangles. The diamond here will add a keyframe. And the keyframe will be equal to this guy right here. But I'm going to change the value now, which will then change the value of this keyframe. So I click on that. And we'll pick some other color, like yellow here, yellow-orange. There we go. So now we've changed the value of that keyframe. Now we can watch this change over time. Here we go. It's going to go from that color to that color and on to the final kind of yellow color. And I'm hoping you're thinking, wow, this is pretty cool. You can change these effect properties over time. Now, I had this guy immediately change from that keyframe going to the next one. I can take this first keyframe and pull it in a ways. That means it's going to stay the original color for a while, and then it'll start changing. And I want to maybe have it go faster to this last color and then hold it toward the end. So it's going to go faster to that color and then hold it steady to the end. So you can move keyframes around like that. If you want to navigate to a keyframe, you click on these little triangles. This one takes you to the previous keyframe, like so. This one takes you to the next keyframe. And sometimes you can't see keyframes along the edge here, so use this guy to navigate to them. There you go. If you want to delete a keyframe, again, you can select it, press delete, or you can press this guy here, and that'll delete the keyframe that's currently being hovered over by the current time indicator. Now let's move on and do one more effect that I think is going to really be pretty exciting when you see it. It's called Lens Flare. I'm going to delete this effect. We need to find Lens Flare now. L-E-N-S, Lens Distortion, Lens Flare. There it is. Drag this over to that clip. That adds a little lens flare to it. Let me just go over here and click on this. There's the lens flare. The lens flare is one of those effects that has that four round circle thing in the corners. That means that it has some kind of a target. When I select it, you see there is the target. And the target is the lens flare center. You can move the lens flare around. Is that cool or what? I'm going to drag this thing off the edge of the screen there like that. You can still see the target. And I'm going to put the current time indicator to the beginning here. And I want to keyframe the lens flare center and the flare brightness. So I turn on keyframes, toggle the animation switches on. We've now said this position is the first value for here, and that brightness is the brightness there. I'm going to drop the brightness down a little bit so it's not quite so bright. And now I'm going to go into the clip a little ways. Let's say about a third of the way into the clip, right around there. I'm going to move this guy to right about here. The lens flare is going to go from there to there. I want to make it brighter when it gets there. So I'll bring it up to 100 something percent right there. So now it's going to go like this. It's going to go right like that. Let's move into the clip a little bit farther, another third of the way in. I want to take it farther, so I'm going to drag it right to there. And notice now that I drag it, it's going to start curving. This is called a Bezier curve, which I'll discuss when we work with the motion effect. Now let's go to the end of the clip here, or near the end. I'm going to bring it down here and pass this last flower like that. And now I'm also going to drop the flare brightness a little bit, so it's not quite so bright as it moves along there. So let's see how that works. I'm going to start at the beginning. Here we go. Here we go. Up the line. And it's going to slow down a little bit because of just the way these things are positioned and speed up. So let's take a look here. It goes up and it slows down. There we go. So let's see what's happening. You can see that keyframe there as we go along. As you move along here, you can see the keyframes. If I go to this keyframe here and navigate to it, the keyframe's right under that little spot there. If I move a little bit to the left, you see a little thing right there? That's the keyframe. I can move it around like so. Then there are handles here. The handles define the shape of the curve. It's called Bezier handles. There you go. There's one here at the beginning. You can barely see it. Just the shape of the curve. If I want to add another keyframe here, let's say I want to go farther forward here and bring it down to this flower. I can just pull it down like that. That'll add another keyframe. Pull this little handle down so it's not so abrupt. I added a keyframe. Not by saying add a keyframe, I just changed the position that automatically added a keyframe. It's a new place in time there. I'm going to go here, and instead of dropping straight down, I'm going to lift him up too to this position here like that. Adjust its handle a little bit. There we go. So let's see how that works now. We'll go back to the beginning, and we'll animate this guy along that path. The path is going to dip down a little bit there. Move along, and go like that, and dip off the end of the page. 
So what I've tried to do is just give you a basic overview of keyframes. Recognize that keyframes mark the beginning and the end of changed values. And the end can also mark the beginning of the next changed value. We have five keyframes here. That's the beginning, the end, beginning, end, beginning, end, beginning, end. Each one marks a change of value from one to the next. And those change values can be something as simple as brightness or a color or something more complex like motion. And we're going to dive much deeper in the keyframes as we go through some of the upcoming chapters.